Blessings, friends, and welcome back to High Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a lifestyle, and Jesus Christ is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Well, we're continuing our study in the Red Letter series, which, of course, are all the words of Jesus. And tonight, we're going to continue in chapter 8 of Matthew, and we're going to pick up in verse 18. Now, we're going to focus on the red letters, but it's important that we lay the context. So let's read together Matthew chapter 8, verse 18. Now, when Jesus saw great multitudes about him, he gave commandment to depart to the other other side. And there was a certain scribe that came and said unto him, Master, I will follow you whithersoever thou goest. And Jesus said unto him, The foxes have holes, and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath nowhere to lay his head. And another of his disciples said unto him, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. And Jesus said unto him, follow me and let the dead bury their dead. Now, friends, there's an important concept here that we need to understand. And it's unlike what we're being told by the mass of preachers that are alive and breathing today. You see, they want us to believe that Jesus came to give us this abundant life that we're supposed to have more money, that we're supposed to have nicer things, bigger houses, faster cars. But friends, that's not what the Bible teaches. We see it right here for ourselves. Jesus says unto him, the foxes have holes and the birds of the air, they have their nests, but the son of man has nowhere to lay his head. Now remember, we have been called to follow the example of our master. We have been called to live our lives like King Jesus lived his life. And even though Jesus has always been king, will always be king, and is king, in this passage, Jesus is the servant of all. You see, Jesus laid down his life. He gave his life. And not only did he give his life on Calvary, but he gave his life through every moment of his life. He was the servant to all. And so what he says here is, I came not so that you'll have faster cars, bigger houses, better jobs, more money in the bank, nicer clothes to wear, lots of gold and diamonds and jewelry to be able to go on big and exotic vacations. No, I came so that you will learn the danger in those things, that you will seek the kingdom of God, that you will lower yourself and seek a lowly life, that you will be humble and not proud, that you'll be quiet and not boisterous, that you'll fight your battle on your knees and not with a weapon raised high. These are the messages of Messiah. These are the messages that the people of God have proclaimed for so long. But they're being drowned out in silence by the mega churches and the super preachers who drive their Rolls Royces and live in their big mansions. But that's not the message, friend. This is the message. It reminds me of a passage in Luke chapter 14 that we often refer to picks up in verse 26. He says, if any man will come to me and he does not hate his father and his mother and his wife and his children and his brother and his sisters, even his very own life, he cannot be my disciple. I mean, whosoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. The cross is a a place of suffering, friend. It's a place of death, a place of self-denial, a place of sacrifice. But I want you to think about the Christians that you know, maybe even your very own life. Where's the sacrifice? Where's the self-denial? Where's the death? Jesus said, if you want to live, you have to die. You see, what's interesting to me is how so many people take the teachings of Messiah and turn them and cater them to their own lifestyles. But when we take them simply, literally, off the pages of the the scriptures and we take them as they are being taught, we see over and over and over this message of holiness, separation from this life, 
being set apart unto the things of God, seeking and pursuing holiness, godliness, and righteousness. And we see nothing that favors our desire to be successful or to achieve great things in this life. That's not what the Bible teaches. And look, for those that would say, well, now, wait a minute. We have to have a house. We have to have a car to get around. We have to have these things. I would challenge you on that. Jesus answered it like this. In verse 21, another one of his disciples said unto him, let me go and take care of the things of this life. Let me bury my very own father. Something that would seem, seem significant and important. And what does Jesus say about that? He says, you follow me and let the dead bury the dead. In other words, you let this world take care of the things of this world. They will. Just like Jesus said, you'll always have the poor with you. But me, you'll only have for a very short time. Well, it's the same way. In this world, this world is always going to thrive and exist upon itself until Messiah comes back and changes all of that, of course. But this world is going to continue to progress and to become more modern and more civilized, turning away from the things of God. I mean, do you know that it wasn't very much too long ago that atheism didn't even exist? It, re it really, in the technicality of the word, it doesn't exist today. Read Romans chapter 1. There's no such thing as an atheist. Every man knows in the depth of his heart that God exists. This world proves it to him. All he has to do is look outside. But so that he can follow the lust and evil desires of his own heart, he cannot accept the fact that there's a God because if he does, he has to accept that that God has commands, that that God has boundaries. And they don't want any boundaries. They want a, a free-for-all. And so they deny the existence of God, thereby they're not pricked in their conscience by his commandments, his rules, his judgments, and his statutes. But Jesus says, let the dead, let this world take care of its own things. You're not to be of this world. You're not, your attention is not to be focused upon this world. I mean, people ask me all the time, can you be a Christian and do this, this, and this, and this? Why would you want to be? You've been called. It's, it's born within us. The moment that we're born again, there is a hatred for the things of this world and a love that has been born for the things of God. I mean, it wasn't too very long ago that we did. you, you couldn't drag us to a church. You couldn't pay us to open the Bible. Now these are the things we love. I mean, the things we once hated, we now love. The things we once loved, we now hate. Why? Because we've been born again. And the moment we were born again, there was a disdain in our, a, a, a distaste in our mouth for the things of this world. And yet as the flesh battles the spirit, we're drawn back into the things of this world. There's, a, there's an enticement. There's a magnetism, an attraction for the things of this world. That's the flesh. And then there's this desire, this magnetism, this attraction for the things of God. That's the spirit. And they war against one another. And over and over and over, we're taught by Messiah in many different ways to hate the things of this world and pursue the things of God. And that's what he's saying here. If you want to follow me, I don't even have a place to lay my head. You should expect no less. Don't seek the things of this life. Don't seek the pleasures. Don't seek the creature comforts. Learn what it means to deny yourself purposefully. Cause yourself pain by sacrificing the things of this world. Start simple. Now, of course, be, be mindful of the people around you. For instance, in the example I'm about to give, when you're standing in the grocery line, if there are people behind you, certainly don't let others go before you, causing someone who's behind you aggravation. That's not fair to them. But if there's only one person behind you, especially if they have a large cart full of things and you've only got a couple of items, let them go first. Watch what it does to your flesh. Watch what it does to your flesh. Deny yourself coffee in the morning. Deny yourself meat and eat only vegetation for a short time or maybe for the rest of your life. Deny yourself the clothes that you like to wear and wear things that don't even match and color coordinate. Instead of cutting your hair to where it has some form or it meets some fad, 
purposely destroy your hair? I mean, why do we feel like we have to meet the acceptable appearance of what people expect from us? Instead of buying clothes where pants go all the way down to your heel, wear them above your ankle. I mean, you say, preacher, you've lost your mind. You flipped your gourd. Why? Because it's going to attack your pride. It's going to attack your ego. You're going to feel like when you walk in the store, everyone is looking at you funny. They are. And that's going to do nothing but humble you. It's going to tear your pride to pieces. But that's what you've been called to do by your Messiah. Purposely live like poor people. Do it on purpose and watch your flesh pitch a fit. Purposely get rid of your fancy fast car and buy an old jalopy. Yeah, but preacher, you don't understand. I do understand. I too face the same difficulties that you face in making these decisions. Purposely turn off the TV and spend a couple of hours in the Word of God. Purposefully get down on your knees and before asking anything for yourself, pray for others. Ask for others. You want to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Ask that they'll be filled with the Holy Spirit. You want a deeper walk with God? Pray that they'll have a deeper walk with God. Instead of bad-mouthing the president and the Congress and the people of this world in leadership positions, pray for them. Stop catering to every little whim and desire of your flesh and learn what self-denial and sacrifice is all about. Look what Messiah says one more time. The foxes have holes. The birds have nests. The pagans have all the things that they want in this world. And sometimes that may not make sense to you. But the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Friends, we have lost sight of what it means to be a follower of Messiah. We don't have the first inkling of a clue of what it means to live like he lived, to live like the early disciples lived. Oh, that we would learn. Oh, that we would know what it means to be a true follower of Messiah and that we will let, as in verse 22, the world take care of its own and all of our focus, all of our attention, all of our affection, all of our desire will be upon the things of God and his kingdom. Isn't that what we were told just a couple of chapels, uh, chapters ago? Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, seek first the kingdom of God. Let that be the first thing on your mind when you wake up, the last thing on your mind when you go to sleep, and let it occupy every thought, action, and word throughout the day. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things will be added unto you and if they're not that's okay jesus said it's almost impossible for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven why be tempted by such things why allow your faith to be jeopardized by such things go into your closet right now and in, in, in your home and pick the number one thing that means the most to you. Your computer, your TV, an item of clothing, an item of jewelry. Doesn't matter. Pick the most important thing you have. And just give it away to a total stranger. No questions asked. Just give it away. And watch what it does to your flesh, friends. We have no idea of what sacrifice is all about. But we better get used to it. And we need to start training ourselves in those areas. We need to start training ourselves to eat the most disparaging things because there's coming a day when we're really going to suffer. And because we have been so spoiled, that suffering is going to be so much greater. Let's start training ourselves today in what real sacrifice is all about. Go a week without a shower or longer, but let's prepare for the suffering that's coming. So that it won't hit us. The punch of it won't be quite so hard when it comes because we'll be used to denying ourselves the things of this world because we've been doing it for so long. And then it will be easy if and when 
We stand before the governments of this world and they say, you bow down and worship this antichrist or we're going to take your head. Take my head. I gave everything a long time ago. That's the last thing that you can take from me. That's the only thing that you can take from me because I gave it all to Jesus long ago. Friends, that's the message. That's the call. I hope that you see that. It's been presented so far in many different ways and it's going to be presented in even more ways. And I'm not distorting it and I'm not making it say anything that it doesn't say. That's what it says. The foxes have holes, birds of the air have nests, the son of man has nowhere to lay his head. What does 1 John chapter 2 tell us? Let him who calls himself a follower of Yeshua walk as he walked. Verse 6, go read it. That's what it says. Live like he lived. He lived with nothing and he was not concerned about the affairs of this life. That's why he says in verse 22, let this world take care of its own affairs, its own concerns. You cast all your attention, all your focus upon me and you follow me. It took me to the cross. It'll take you to the cross. That's what he says. It cost me my life. It'll cost you your life. But I like my life. I like the choices that I have. I want to follow the American dream. You can't have both friends. You got to decide. Do you want to follow Messiah? Or do you want to sell out to this world? It's that simple. As for me and my house, I'm a sellout. I'm sold 100%. I pray that you are too. Friends, I love you. I'm here to give you the uncompromised truth. Maybe you're not going to hear it in most churches or on the airwaves, but I'm here to give you the truth so that I can stand before my Father, my God, my King, and know that I have been faithful to what He has commissioned me to do. I love you, friends. Now, as Yahweh wills, and until next time, I'll see you on the next video.